In this video, we look at the effect of a non-infinite open loop gain on the inverting amplifier. In other words, we're going to be looking at the inverting amplifier configuration only now, instead of having A naught be infinite, it's going to be some number less than infinity. Probably still large, but less than infinity. The operational amplifier is a difference amplifier that multiplies the difference between VP and VN, or the output V out is equal to A naught times V sub P minus V sub N. Again, in the ideal amplifier configuration, or the ideal amplifier model, we say that A naught is infinite and the difference between the two is virtually zero. And so we have this indeterminate form, infinity times zero, but we calculated the gain using these ideal op-amp approximations. We found the gain to be negative R2 over R1. But in this video, we're going to look at the effect of a finite A0. In other words, V out will in fact equal this A naught times VP minus V sub N, but V sub P is grounded, so V naught is going to equal A naught times zero minus V sub N, so we'll just have a minus V sub N. That's an N term there. Or we can then solve for V sub N, the voltage at the inverting terminal V sub N, is equal to V out over negative A naught. So we now have, using this expression here, we've calculated an expression for V sub N. You'll notice that because A naught is not infinite, the voltage here is not exactly the same as the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. In other words, that ideal op-amp approximation that we've been using uh, that says that the um, the virtual short approximation that comes from the, in the ideal op-amp model is a result of having an infinite gain. So now that we've reduced that gain from infinite to some finite number, the voltage across here is not going to be zero. And in fact, we've calculated an expression for the voltage there to be negative V naught over A, over A naught. Now with that, let's go ahead and come up with an expression for V out. And to do that, we're going to start at the this expression right here, or the, the voltage at this node, which we have in terms of V naught. And then we can determine V out by adding to this term, um, or subtracting from this term, the voltage drop across R2. But to do that, we need to know what the current here is. And because the current here is the same as the current there, we need to determine what I1 is. Again, because the current going in here is zero, we're not, we're not relaxing that ideal op-amp approximation. We're still saying the current going into the amplifier is zero. So the current I1 will be the current coming up here through I2. It's, it's easier to do it than to say it. Let's just go ahead and do this. So I1 will equal the voltage drop across R1 divided by R1. Well, the voltage drop across R1 is going to be V in minus the voltage here, which is minus V out over A naught divided by R1. So now, as I was saying, we can say then that V out is equal to this voltage right there negative V out over A naught. And then because we're going in the direction of current flow, we'll be seeing a voltage drop from here to there. So it'll be minus I1 times R2. Now let's go ahead and substitute in the expression for I1. We have then V naught is equal to negative V naught over A naught minus now I2, or I1 rather, is this expression right there. So minus R2 times I1, the R2 times I1, which is um, V in minus a minus is a plus V naught over A naught 
divided by R1. And this isn't an R1, this is an R2. R2. So let's, let's just make sure we did this right. We've got then this negative V0 over A0 minus R2 times I1. But I1 is Vn minus, minus is a plus. So Vn minus um, V0 over A0 all divided by R1. Now we can combine like terms, which means we've got a V0 here, a V0 there, and a V0 there. So combining all of the V0 terms and then separating, so we've got the V0 terms on one side and the other variable is Vn, we then can write V0 times 1 plus R2 over R1 times 1 over A plus 1 is equal to negative R2 over R1 times Vn. And V0 is timesing this whole side. Now, dividing both sides by Vn to give us V out over Vn, which is our closed loop gain term, and then dividing both sides by this bracketed term gives us then this expression. Now, in this form, we can make three observations. First of all, G, the closed loop gain for the inverting amplifier with an A naught less than infinity, that gain term is less than the closed loop gain term using, that we derived using the ideal op amp model. The ideal op amp model gain for the inverting amplifier is negative R2 over R1. The gain term that we have derived using a finite A0 is less than this term, and it's less than it by 1 plus whatever this term evaluates to. So that makes sense. If the open loop gain is less, we'd expect the closed loop gain to be less also, and in fact it is. The second observation that we'd make is that as A0 approaches infinity, G approaches the ideal inverting operate the in ideal um, inverting gain term. As A0 gets bigger and bigger, this term right here becomes less and less significant. As A0 goes to infinity, this term goes to zero, and G then does in fact equal negative R2 over R1. And finally, as we already observed earlier, as A0 goes to zero, the voltage at the inverting terminal goes to zero also, and we have then that virtual short. We're going to use this expression in down the, uh, down the ways just a little way as we start looking at the effects of the finite open loop gain in terms of the frequency domain.